Okay, so this is a, a new video, audio that I wanted to do, and I may be coining a new term, I'm not sure, maybe someone has written something like this or thought something like this before, but I tried to find it on the internet, so I don't know. Um, what this, this video is about is the philosophical perspective of pan-magnetism. And what that means is that everything is magnetic, that all is magnetism, or that all is based on magnetism. And more specifically, that, that what that means is that there are no non-magnetic materials in existence. Now, of course... Um, the question then becomes, if, if this kind of model is true, it could actually be um, testable in a scientific kind of sense, but also it could give a, a much more solid philosophical um, description of reality that's more specific than panpsychism or animism or the other one, I think it's called high... I don't know how to pronounce it, but hyloism or something like that, where each of those perspectives, one is, you know, panpsychism is that everything has a psychic or mental aspect. Um, animism is that everything has a soul or a spirit. And hylozoism, or however you pronounce it, is that everything has life. But if you say that reality is fundamentally, if you, if you, go from a philosophical perspective of pan-magnetism, you're saying that, yes, all three of those things, that everything is psychic, everything has life, and everything potentially has a soul or spirit. And you can put it in one term that's potentially testable. So, so this is a, a video about the philosophical perspective of pan-magnetism and what it might look like, um, how uh, magnetism, as, as this this philosophical perspective of pan-magnetism, that all is magnetism, how it might describe reality. So, the, the essential principle is one of magnetic resonance, which is based on magnetic currents, similar to the whole theory of yin and yang, or yin and yang, however you pronounce it, that there are these two uh, polarities or spins or currents. Um, this is the, the same perspective, but maybe a little more specific. That, that the, yes, there are two magnetic spins, two magnetic polarities, and one is clockwise and one is counterclockwise. Now, what other features and characteristics one might be able to define or describe is... Uh, another question, but those two basic fa principles would be the the essential kind of point, and that would be based on a, a variety of different theories from a variety of different thinkers um, and scientists. Albert Roy Davis, Walter C. Rawls, on the one hand, uh, Walter Russell, he kind of pointed to something similar, and then another uh, scientist, Howard Johnson. I would definitely recommend that if you want to approach understanding magnetism correctly, um, not just as a as as it operates in magnets, but as a potentially a universal force um, or a fundamental force um, in the sense of a pan magnetism um, perspective, then you should really look at Albert Roy Davis, Walter C. Rawls, those those. Uh, Two authors, they, they write their books together, and as well as uh, Walter Russell and Howard Johnson. Um, now, the key characteristic, or one of the key characteristics of of a magnetic uh, model of reality, is the figure eight pattern, or what I call the figure eight fractal pattern. 
and it is actually a little bit different than the yin yang symbol it's actually a figure eight or a figure eight cross pattern or you could say a figure eight cross fractal pattern and when you start to play around with these um, figure eight cross fractal patterns you can clearly see um, how the figure eight pattern figure eight cross pattern when you lay it over the human body or any other structure in nature you can start to see precisely how this um, model a more accurate model of the uh, flows of magnetic currents clockwise and anti-clockwise how they can describe and define all the structures in nature so another basic principle of this model is that electrical currents follow magnetic currents and that they form current sheets between uh, magnetic spins or around between so on so what this means is that the notion that that there's some that when you get an electrical current then you get magnetism and magnetism is just a byproduct of electricity is actually mistaken the reverse is true that that wherever there's magnetism there are magnetic spins rather clockwise and counterclockwise anti-clockwise there are uh, electrons or electricity fill the the gaps or the spaces between those electrical currents and I mean those magnetic currents rather and what you get is current sheets and so basically if you can map out precisely the magnetic spins or the magnetic currents you could also map out these electrical current sheets all throughout creation so that's one prediction of the model um, of this perspective this philosophical perspective there's also the the question of, of frequency so-called electromagnetic waves and so on but really I think it's more precise to say that they are electro frequencies and that it is electro frequencies ie electrical current frequencies that are defined by magnetic spins um, and then that's that's part of the, the the process but then it goes further the next step in the in the process is that magnetic spins and electro frequencies result in the release of photons generating light phenomena so although this may may or may not be the correct interpretation of the facts it does seem to make more sense than other perspectives that if you look at solar bodies for instance as you have magnetic currents electrical currents within the magnetic currents or between them this all the the magnetic spins and then the confluence of those two forces result results in the release of photons and you have the generation of light The, the main thing to keep in mind is that um, from a pan magnetism perspective that magnetism the, the magnetic spins these fundamental magnetic spins that are everywhere throughout space and everywhere throughout your body and everywhere throughout your psyche everywhere throughout everything essentially um, stitching everything together in this kind of magnetic web um, basically what you have is you have two properties one is stability because you have this these stable magnetic spins that have definite um, spin properties and ratios and so on but you also have dynamism you have this continuous spin motion that has stability so what you have is the potential for patterning through specifically 
not only through the magnetic spins, but also through electrofrequencies and the release of photons. And so all other phenomena are built upon this interplay of magnetic particles and spins, electrons, which I'm assuming are generated by the buildup of magnetic particles or some sort of energy tension between the you know two magnetic spins and then photons so when you take those three things all the other um, structures are built on those three kind of constituents now that may not be totally accurate but at least I think it's closer this whole model may not be a hundred percent accurate but the basic premise that of, of a pan magnetic rather than any other kind of philosophical perspective of reality or that reality is based on the principle of pan magnetism that all is magnetism all is magnetic that all is shaped by magnetic forces which are based on magnetic spins which are based on magnetic currents which are based essentially ultimately on magnetic currents or, or magnetic particles rather that would spin clockwise or counterclockwise um, that this basic print model is it, it has the potential for a much more accurate and I think predictive and precise um, perspective on reality and it opens up a lot of doors for technology healthcare and other the whole range of human concerns scientifically and technologically so that's about it thanks